Okay, I'm talking about 4Z D1 or 4Z E1 uh, timing covers, and this is kind of par for the course. You get something that someone's already put some epoxy or some plastic weld on. The uh, harmonic balancer is getting into it and chewing it up. Um, you know, this one's kind of same deal, greasy as hell. Um, that's pretty common. You get into these where someone's butchered them so that they could do some work on it. You know, somebody probably cut this thing up so that they could do a uh, timing belt or a water pump. And this one over here has got a piece broken off of it, which is common. And, um, you know, if you can get one that's actually somewhat clean and complete, this is kind of a rare find in a gym. And so this one right here is a stellar example. And uh, this is going out to my buddy Willis down in Florida. Uh, upper timing covers are dime a dozen, man. Those things are just all over the place. Uh, only real problem you see with those sometimes is, like, these little grommets will get knocked out of them or whatever. You know, they're just greasy. But, um, you know, come across something like this right here. You clean it up a little bit, good to go. Um, this is a silver one. They actually, 2.3s. Early 2.3s had silver molded plastic, and then all the rest of them were all black. So that's kind of cool when you come across a silver one. Like this was the, ma the matching lower to that upper. That's kind of just a nifty little deal. Um, on the upper, the backing plates on the 2.3, or at least to my knowledge, or for, you know the Troopers, they used a steel backing plate, and on the 2.6s they used an aluminum backing plate. And that corresponded with the timing gear. You'll see the timing, the 2.3 and 2.6 timing gears are different. There's a difference in the in the pitch and the width of them. So when you go doing you know head swaps and stuff like that, you just have to stick to one or the other. And usually it's preferably stick with the 2.6 stuff because it's later and heavier duty. This one's bad. This bolt, you know, came loose that holds the little dowel pin. That dowel pin started rocking back and forth and it uh, wallowed out that hole right there. That's something that um, caused the truck to run like it was. It sounded like a diesel motor. And then, you know, you get a rusty pulley like this. You don't want to use something like that unless you do a really good job of cleaning it up. Um, anyway, I think that's about it.